All right. So let's continue. All right, the next step here is to actually set the face because now, right now, we only have a an array. So I'm going to use another function called set faces that I'm going to create. And this set faces gets this array we just created. Okay, I'm going to create up in he up here so it's easy for us to see right this function has another for loop that I'm going to initialize is zero uh, and I will be smaller than the max index yeah. In this case, uh, I'm going to do a thing here so it can be consistent. I'm going to pass the max index variable there. Okay. So here I'm going to write max e plus plus. All right. Call the braces. We create a var called card. It's equal to the deck move clip dot get child add. If you are coming from an action script three backgrounds, you may already be familiar with this function. What it does is to get a display object and return it for us. If it was action script, we would have to say as move clip, but this is JavaScript, we don't need to do this. I'm going to assign a dynamic variable property to the card variable called i, so I can identify this later. I'm going to give it a name, and this part is important. The name of my card will be card plus array i plus i modulus operator 2 okay and i'm going to wrap these two values in a string constructor to make sure make sure everything will be correct with just strings uh, why is this i need to concatenate a prefix of card to the current value of the array I'm passing here. Remember, I have those randomized values. I need to get the current one and concatenate to my card string. And after that, I need to get the current i value and get the reminder of a division by two. So what will happen is that uh, when i is zero, I will get I will get zero. When i is one, I will get one. When i is two, I will will get zero again. And when i is three. I will get one again. So I get this loop 0101. The reason I'm doing this is because I if I only get put the index coming from the array, I will get duplicates. So for example, I will have card five and card five again, card three and card three again. But it will create a problem for me to reference them later. So to solve this, I'm assigning this so numerical suffix, numeric suffix. So we get card five zero, card five one. Okay. All right. Continue here. Uh, we only have to assign a value for the text fields. So we finally have 
our cards correctly identifier. To do this, I only need to get the value from the array. Okay, so save this, export, and oh no, I don't want to cancel this. All right, no errors. You see, I had the my cards randomized the way we expect i'm going to refresh here you see it works like a shot all right going back to our code now that we have this array setups i'm going to create a handler for a function so now we finally have uh, a way to click our cards, okay? All right. Uh, for this, I'm going to create another another line here, and I'm going to get the deck object. I'm going to create a non. I'm going to call the on function and assign a, a click handler for this, okay? Deck, all right. I'm going to call this on click, on click deck. All right. So let's create our on click deck function, receiving a variable called e as a parameter, the click event. First thing we need to do is to create a variable here called face to store the reference to the current card clicked so we're going to say face equals to e dot target target because we are storing the actual object receiving the click not the object that uh, that we added the listener it's easier i think it's easier than adding a event listener to every single object we have okay Next thing we need to do is to deactivate the object so we can receive clicks anymore using the mouse enabled property, set it, setting it to false. Then I'm going to lower the opacity so it's clear to the user that the that card is no longer clickable. So I'm going to test this in here and see if it works. It works. Like a shot. Another thing we need to do is to create a variable called presses. This variable is going to count the number of time we're clicking because the user clicks in turns. The first click, it try uh, it it sees the card that it, that was hidden, and the first in the second click, it see if it, he or she clicked on the same card. Okay. So, to do this, we're going to use the same trick, trick we used it before. Uh, let me write, write it down in here, if else, uh, if the presses variable models to is equal to 1, uh, meaning the user is in the second turn, we're going to do a thing. If he, he or she is in the first turn, we're going to do another thing, okay? And every click, I need to increment this presses variable, okay? If it's the first turn, the only thing we need to do is to set uh, another variable I'm going to create in here. Uh, I'll, I'm sorry, I already have that. I'm going to set the previous face equals to the current face. So we know the next time what was the previous clicked card. Here inside this condition, another if else. Uh, I'm going to check if the name 
of the card without that numeric suffix we added before 010101 is equal in both cards. If it's equal, okay, you make a pair, you made a pair, they're gone. You can continue. If not, we're going to restore both cards. To do this, we get the name property of the card and we use the slice function to remove only the, the last part, okay? And we, we check if it's equal. Then, if, if both are equal, what we're going to do is to access the mouse enable of the current card and set it to false the previous face mouse enabled we are going to set to false as well the previous face needs to uh, sorry to get its opacity lower down so it's clear to the user what's going on well if the user misses we're going to restore card states right uh, okay all right let's test this and let's see if it's working okay let's call the console to see if there is some error okay see that if if you're not making a pair we restore cards right but if we click on uh, cards that are equal, they are both gone the way we expected it to be. Okay, and I cannot click on the same card again. And this is it. The, the basic mechanics for this, for this game is working. Okay, let's try to make a pair. All right. Uh, well, you don't need to see me winning this game, okay? <laughs> because it's it's just too easy, all right? So guys, this is it. It's just a simple mechanic. In the next tutorial, I'm planning to, to make this more professional by adding animations to turn the cars. The way it is now is too easy because you can see where the cars are. But in the next part, we're going to use time uh, functions so the user will, will have a glimpse in the beginning of where the cards are and they are all turned, uh, they're all flipped and then the user has to really find find out where the face are and this is it guys I hope you like this tutorial see you the next time bye bye